So there is yet another trend that is plaguing Gen Z and millennials. The antisocial, relationshipless, lost generations, as they all love to call us. We already had and talked about the lay flat community in Asia, where young people just wanted to lay down instead of work. And now that idea has made its way to the West. Now, side note, as somebody who loves being horizontal on her couch, I understand where the lay flat people are coming from. However, in real life, that is just not how the cookie crumbles. You don't get to lay flat until the end of time, nor would you want to. Anyway, back to the point. These anti-work communities are becoming more and more prevalent, and now there is a new name for them, NEETS, which stands for Not an Employment, Education, or Training. So basically, the only thing that they've got going on is vibes, and we're gonna talk about that today. Before we do, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the comment section channel if you have not already, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss one of our uploads. All right, so I wanna be clear here that I know the economy is absolutely in shambles. I'm filming this on Monday morning. Literally, the stock market is crashing, is tanking as I am filming this. So this episode is not about people who have fallen on hard times or who got laid off and are searching for a new job so that they can support their families. No, this is about the young people who got fired and then just tapped out and said, never mind, I just won't work, or who have quit their jobs and are just vibing at home. It's a vibe. Those are the neats. Now, Business Insider recently did a piece on this community, and the headline read, Gen Z and millennial neats are on the rise. Many say that they would rather do nothing than be unhappy at work. And they gave a similar disclaimer at the beginning of their article, saying, many NEETs are listless, struggling through tough economic times, living off of loans, and losing hope of retiring or buying a house. And I don't really excuse those types of NEETs, but those are more the NEETs by accident. They believed the lies, they took out all of the student loans, they went to the four-year college, they got the PhD in lesbian dance theory, and now they're going, oh my gosh, my life doesn't mean anything, I have no job, I'm just gonna do nothing, I can't make ends meet, ah! But then they got into the crux of this community. Some people reject the idea that being a neat is a bad thing, and they want to reclaim the label by creating a subculture of the voluntarily doormat. <laughs> Rather than jump on the first opportunities that come along, voluntary neats are holding back and hoping to witness an evolving workplace culture that they'll enter when it suits them better. I mean, that is literally the most Gen Z thing I have ever heard. No, I don't think I'll get a job. That doesn't suit me right now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hang out on the couch with my cat and do nothing and not pay the bills. And then when a job comes along where the workplace culture, where the culture suits me, then I will go get the job. This is ridiculous. Now, of course, as every terrible thing in our culture, this has been discussed on TikTok. And this man was actually quoted in that Business Insider piece. Just listen. Being unemployed, refusing to work, being an NEET neat, uh, not employed in education or training, you're breaking one of the most accepted social norms that we have today. I don't know if like gay people fall for the Jordan Peterson stuff. I wasn't falling for it because self-help, self-improvement, uh, paternalism narrative. I had a job where I was making a lot of money before this. I was miserable <laughs> the whole time. I was always miserable. I was, I've was i been miserable since my whole life, basically. Okay, well, that just <laughs> speaks volumes. I've been miserable basically my whole life, but I also hate Jordan Peterson, and I think that self-improvement is paternalistic. You can't really have both of those. Maybe you should try the self-improvement. Just... <laughs> Crazy idea. Now I have no money because of losing my job, being sick, at the same time getting scammed. You realize like when you have nothing to lose, like that's kind of, you kind of have the edge because you have nothing to take. Somebody started a GoFundMe for me a couple weeks ago because of my car is insurance expired and I can't afford to renew it. I really just want to get back on the road. I started making content. I really wanted to make content about cars and it turned into this whole like regional politics. Well, maybe you could make content about cars if you're working on cars as your job. Also, if you got a job, you would be able to pay for your car insurance. And again, if you like cars and you want to make content about cars, maybe you could go work on them. Allegedly, that was his job prior to the pandemic, but because he got sick, he couldn't work, and now he's decided not to. The whole thing is just wild. All right, I'll let him finish. The link is in my bio for the GoFundMe, and, and I really just want to get this thing back on the road because it, it means a lot to me. So please donate money for me because I'm choosing not to work. That's basically what that woman at TikTok was all about. And you seriously just cannot make this stuff up. This person is choosing not to work and twisting it into some moral statement about recreational politics and housing. And then at the end of the video is literally asking for handouts from people who work and who make money. Like, I have never seen a more perfect representation of the modern left. Like, it is so, like, do you not see how that is illogical and how it is immoral? You don't have the moral high ground there when you're asking other people who work to give you money so that you can continue 
not working because you're making some kind of personal political statement and because you hate Jordan Peterson. It like it makes no sense. Now, I literally thought some of these comments were satirical. This guy said, not employed or actively training, love it. I hate the self-improvement narrative. Lots of people push it. This is a bitch of a thing to say. Yeah because it makes our lives better. Because when you take responsibility for your response to the world, for your life, for your own actions, you become a happier, better person because you are in control. Improving your life, yes, is hard work, but it is for the benefit of you and everyone around you and the money that you will make and your jobs and your opportunity. It is a net positive. That's why so many people push it. It's really not that hard to understand. I think you are just lazy. Like the guy in the video literally says, I've been miserable my whole life and you're also anti-self-improvement. Like, dude, the call is coming from inside the house. Also, just as a disclaimer, he is Canadian. So that explains a lot. Also explains how he is able to not work and still live somewhere. Thanks, Trudeau. Anyway, back to that Business Insider article, they quoted something from that video, which you guys might have heard, but he said that he believes that being a neat by choice is breaking one of the most accepted social norms that we have today. And I just have to say, working is not a social norm. A social norm is acting in a certain way, dressing in a certain way, dating in a certain way. Like, working is productivity. It is a fact of life since the dawn of time. You create or produce something of value and then you trade it for money or something of equal value. And that is literally how people have survived for thousands of years. And sometimes working isn't fun. We all know that. That's not a new idea. I'm sure all of us at one point have dreamed about just quitting our jobs and running away and basically becoming neats. But guess what? That's not practical. For 99% of people, it's not right, especially when you're mooching off of others and you have GoFundMes in your TikTok bio. And also for the majority of people, I don't think it would be fulfilling. I think I would get bored after like two months of being a neat. But not everyone is like me because this guy is not the only person who is a neat. Vice recently did a piece about them as well and asked them how they filled their days, which is a very important question because they don't work. Some said that they basically do nothing all day except work on themselves. That's self-improvement. That's literally self-improvement. Through yoga, hobbies, creative projects, and seeing friends. Literally, how is this sustainable or healthy? Rough Greens is both of those things, actually. Because Rough Greens is one of the most affordable and accessible ways to transform your dog's health. Rough Greens is a supplement that contains all the necessary vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega oils, digestive enzymes, and antioxidants that your dog needs every single day. Things that he's probably not getting from his conventional kibble alone. And what I love about this product is that you don't have to go out and buy a new expensive fancy dog food. I know in this economy, Economy, that is probably not in the budget. So you can just sprinkle rough greens on your dog's food every single day and you will be leagues ahead from where you started. Dog owners everywhere are raving about rough greens because it supports healthy joints, it improves bad breath, it boosts energy levels, and so much more. Obviously, we are we eat, and that goes for dogs as well. Naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black, the founder of Rough Greens, is so confident that rough greens will improve your dog's health that he is offering my viewers a free jumpstart trial bag so that your dog can try it too. And that free jumpstart trial bag can be at your door in just a few business days. So go to roughgreens.com slash to get started, or if it's easier, you can call 877-66-MY-DOG. Again, that is roughgreens.com slash Brett, or call 877-66-MY-DOG today. I mean, paw rinse, like, <laughs> how are you gonna take care of your dog if you don't have a job? Like, also, this is such an entitled way of life because you are choosing not to work, and yet your days are filled by the services of other people who do work, people who teach yoga, who create and manufacture and then sell the craft supplies at Michael's, who contribute to your GoFundMe, who pay their taxes on time so that you can collect unemployment, or who spend their entire lives raising you and working for you, AKA your parents. Unsurprisingly, literally like the most unsurprising thing of the century, many of these neets live at home and are funded by their parents or their inheritance. However, they know that that might run out at some point, that their parents might pass away or that their inheritance might run out. So they often promote alternatives. And I'm sure you guessed it, universal basic income. And all of this lines up because needs are primarily Gen Z and millennials. And the people who are most in support of UBI or universal basic income are Gen Zers or millennials. Pew Research actually just released some new data about UBI and people in favor of UBI. And wow, young people favor universal basic income by about two to one. Some studies have even showed that more than 80% of the individuals in these generations support UBI. 83% for Gen Zers, 81% for millennials. Now, one commenter on that original poster's TikTok said, this could be an opportunity to talk about UBI. As in, hey, if we collectively make sure that we're okay, there's likely gonna be a lot of very cool things that happen as a result, your channel as an example. But here's the thing, based on a very recent study, 
that is just not the case. I mean, I don't really think that we needed a study to prove that that was not the case, but we did, and now there is more evidence. So the founders of ChatGPT recently funded the biggest UBI study to date, apparently to see if UBI would be an option once AI takes all of our jobs. I think that was the motivation, and it was a colossal failure. Now, obviously, I first heard about this on X. This guy said, a lot happened in July, but one event went quietly unnoticed. The result of the largest American controlled experiment in universal basic income was released. You haven't heard about it because the findings are terrifyingly bad. You wouldn't say. Shocking. So this is how it was structured. He lays this all out in a thread of 12 tweets. And he says, 1,100 randomized households making under $29,900 a year were given $1,000 per month for three years. Essentially, their income was increased by 40%. The UBI participants lived in urban, suburban, and rural towns in Texas and Illinois. And here, my friends, are the completely expected and predictable results. So result number one, UBI participants ended up earning $1,500 less despite being given $12,000 more annually. For every $1 received, total household income dropped by at least 21 cents. Result number two, UBI participants stayed unemployed for an extra month compared to those unemployed in the control group. Result three, UBI participants worked less and there was no substantive changes in the quality of employment. UBI participants did little to improve their education or training to improve their income. So they got $12,000 a year extra and they did nothing with it. Makes sense because apparently all these people hate Self-improvement. Result four, UBI participants self-reported increased rates of disability to limit the work that they can do, which would only result in them getting more handouts from the government. And if you don't believe that this actually happens, I've talked about this before. I won't go into it too much. My brother was homeless for many years. He's my brother that has schizophrenia. The stories that I heard from him and all of his friends on the street about how they screwed over the system, the way that they lied or manipulated the people that were giving them their disability, that were giving them their social security and their food stamps, it is absolutely wild. And because of these tricks in California, they were making far more than the average American salary. I mean, it is literally wild. But also, again, as I keep saying, completely predictable. I mean, wow, it's almost like handouts don't work. It's almost like we've known this thanks to the absolutely bloated and corrupted unemployment program that literally wastes millions of taxpayer dollars every single year. Now, this poster went on and said, there's two ways to look at these results. Number one, the American underclass is so worn down that when thrown a life preserver, they could only float rather than paddle to safety. UBI advocates will argue that $1,000 a month wasn't enough. Or universal basic income and its collectivist derivatives are never enough. Work is intrinsically tied to human dignity, happiness, and progress. And to be honest, I think that both are sort of true and are very intrinsically connected. I think the people in general have become so collectivist-minded that when thrown a life preserver, they don't see it as an option to swim or get ahead head or build something better, they would just rather coast because it is their right. It's their right to have money and not work and just vibe and do crafts and see their friends and do yoga or whatever the neats were saying. And this is certainly the case with my generation that is overwhelmingly in favor of socialism. Gen Z literally wants socialism. And work and productivity is good for all of us, but they have a very narrow view of this. And I say narrow because with many of these neats, they're not completely opposed to all work. They just want their ideal job, their ideal workplace culture that fits all of their parameters, that makes them fulfilled, and that makes them a certain amount of money so that they can keep their lifestyle. And I mean, again, what's new? We would all love that, but that is simply not how the world works. I don't care if it's not fair, that's just reality. And even though I would love that for all of us, if I could wave a magic wand, it's not our right to have that. That is something that you have to work towards, plan for, save up for, and build. But for them, they would rather just not have a job and be unemployed until they have that, which is just lazy and entitled. I mean, if your dream is to build a pay-what-you-have yoga studio, plant store, bakery, bookstore combo, that's fantastic. I'll definitely go and visit, but that is not going to fall into your lap. You have to work and save like everyone else in the world who has dreams and has responsibility. That is how it works. Hey guys, Brett here. For more stories and videos just like that, make sure you subscribe to my show. See you next time.